Up next on IJDM, we're gonna go ahead and set up and play around with your very own cable box TV guide kind of thing. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Welcome back to IJDM. Let's just jump into this, a lot to cover. I wanna keep this one brief because my last video went almost 30 minutes. And I've really been trying to keep them down in that 15, 20 minute range just to kind of keep out the rambling. But sometimes, like I say, it's about hanging out and whatever. So you just go to getchannels.com. There it is, not hidden, nothing secretive about it. It's there. Um, and then the get function, of course. And then you can see the different tiers you can do. Of course, you can always sign up and it's, it's free for the first month and give it a try. Um, you're always better off paying yearly because you get two months for free from what I'm seeing on this pricing here. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go through the whole, here's how you subscribe and do all this stuff. It's just like any other service you, you sign up for. If you made it this far on the channel, then you should know how to do this type of thing. Now in apps, it's gonna give you the different ways that you can get it, but what we're gonna have to do first is get it on my server. And what I'm using is a Mac mini server, uh, which we'll pull that screen up in a moment, but uh, you'll go to the iOS and we'll just get channel, or iOS, uh, what am I thinking here? Um, Apple TV, Apple TV, da, da, da. Ah, okay, there it is. I don't know why I'm not seeing it up there, but you wanna hit the server and you wanna basically download the server version of it. You wanna put that on your Mac mini and just run the setup. Easy peasy, just run the setup. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that easy. And then if you need the app for whatever you're using it on, we're using it on an, basically an Android device, which is a Google TV. So I went to the, we'll go to the channel store and get that on the TV. Actually, it's already there, but I'll show you how to do that when we jump to that part of the video. And of course, your other systems are there. All right, now, um, okay, well, this went right to the guide. But we, so once you get it set up, you're gonna be presented with a bunch of settings and configuring stuff. Um, yeah, this is just gonna tell you if there's an update pending or check for an update, how long it's been up for, which Mac you're using. Uh, if you wanna know what Mac I'm using, it's an Apple Mac Mini 7 comma one. It's running on, I believe Mojave, but it, they do recommend a higher OS. The problem is I can't really update this system without it getting slow and sluggish when they have the newer OSs for Mac right now. So, and I just don't have the funds available to update my Mac mini. So we are using this one that's five or six years old at this point, maybe even older now that I think about it, but it's, it's still hanging in there. It's had a hard drive replacement and been cleaned and taken care of and it's working. So your general is just your information. It's gonna tell you how much disk space you have. Uh, how much RAM is left on the system or how much it's utilizing. Uh, general is basically your network discovery. Uh, this one I have an external volume, just called it DVR uh, set up. That's where it's gonna do the recording and time shifting for just DVRing your programs basically. But once you have those set up, you're just gonna wanna basically click both those on and you're just gonna select where you want the DVR to go. I did use the actual hard drive for a while, but my drive is nearly full. So I, I switched it to an external one just to put a little less pressure on the actual drive that's there. Um, the interface in the web is just gonna tell you where it's gonna go. Um, I normally want it to go to settings when I'm in the web admin and quick actions, I'm not really worried about that right now, nah. Um, glad I saw that though. Now I know why it always jumps to guide when I pull it up. Uh, then we have your URL and all that. Um, hmm, uh, yeah, what was this? Oh, this is your remote section. This is where you set up to do your remote streaming if you're outside of your home. You may have to change a port on your router. Again, I'm not gonna go into all this. Uh, it's easily, easily you can just basically do a search on the internet and it tells you how to you know, set up port forwarding on your router system. Um, this is, I believe is just a service. I don't, I don't think I'm using that right now anyways, um, or maybe it's already connected, but it says off there. And my library database is obviously set up um, there. Uh, that pretty much did it by itself once I added the actual hard drive that I'm using. I shouldn't say hard drive, it's actually a solid state drive is actually a difference. Most important part now, okay, here is the live TV stuff. Um, first thing that shows up is my HD home run. Um, 
I set that up. Anybody knows about HD home runs. They're basically a box you hook up in line with your antenna. Um, it's just hooked up. It's like any of my other TVs that are wired. It just plugs right in and then the network discovers it and it's there. And from there, you can manage the lineup. You can reload it like I just did, but I did not want to do that. Um, manage lineup is what I wanted to do. And here's where you can basically lock out channels or set up favorites. Um, there they all are, yeah. And it divides them off in SD or HD. I mean, some of the channels seem like they're HD, but I guess this knows, <laughs> or the HD home run does. Uh, here's my spectrum. Uh, with that, I basically just hit add source and went to TV everywhere. Well, HD home right, run, um, we just go ahead and if it doesn't automatically add it, you can manually add your HD home run. You just need to know what IP address it, it connected to. Um, your TV everywhere is where you have your TV networks, where you choose your provider, whether it be AT&T Universe, Sling, Verizon Fios, Wow, or even YouTube TV seems to be in here. Um, the two I'm using, of course, is Spectrum and Sling because of the ones I have service to. You put your user password, hit sign in, bam, it shows up. So there's Spectrum and Sling. Now, this will sign like the normal channels that it comes in on antenna. These will automatically go to the 6,000s. There's no easy way to have it not go to the 6,000s, but is what it is. And again, you can manage your channels. Uh, some channels I just turned off because I'm never gonna ever watch them. And other ones I'll favorite so that they're in my favorites list. News and weather, uh, which you'll see when I pull up. And basically these are all categories of different things I've set up. But like on, let's say for instance, Pluto, which is a popular one. Uh, when you set it up, you'll be presented with a screen like this. Uh, you basically just look for an M3U playlist. It propagates in and there it is. I'm not gonna show you how to do this. I'm not gonna go into all that. Again, it's easily searchable to find these lists and you just put in the website. You generally wanna be connected to the website or the link because the links refresh. And when they refresh, they refresh on your system. If you'd actually put it in as a file, then you run the Jeopardy. If something changes on it, the system won't know unless you update the list manually. I like to have it done as much as, as automated as possible is what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much to explain and so much to do, but I don't think most people are going to have this much, much stuff. Maybe this and maybe Sling or maybe Pluto or not all this stuff. I put a, full, a few YouTube channels in here that, yes, you can import YouTube channels magically and make them like TV channels. It's kind of neat. I did that with my own uh, Weather Zone Tampa Bay channel. And then I have my personal media, which I'll show you um, later in the video, where I can pull up movies and so forth. Live TV and DVR, just some more settings here. Clients is where I set up my global, uh, basically the way I want the system to run, what I want to show up. Because there's a lot of different options if you want to have different categories or you want to do certain things when you pull up certain channels. There's a few things you cannot change, which I'll show later, but mostly it's, it is, it's it's mostly customizable. For instance, if you don't even want to use, if you just want to use all channels and you don't want to use favorites or sports or movies like that, you can actually flip toggle that function off. And I just have it set globally. And of course on these, on each one that's coming in, it can, it'll actually allow you to customize on certain sources or certain clients that are using it certain TVs, boxes that are using this system. You can have it so that if it's in a guest room or your, your child's room or teenager's room where they cannot change stuff, you can have it set up so certain channels are locked out or whatever in their rooms. Uh, advanced functions, not really much to do in here. It's just if you're having issues with this, that, and the other. And that's just about, about what different uh, things they're using to make this all happen. Generally, the only time I'm really into this whole setup thing is when I need to fool with sources and maybe just kind of tweak a few things or if I want to remove something from the cable guide that popped in or if it's a situation where something is stuck, I can go in here and I can, I can reload the, the file or the link and I can reload down, download the data if the data is having issues. Uh, the ones that you do bring in that I forgot to mention that are manually brought in versus the TV everywhere where you're using the one function custom channels, that does allow you to sign actual channel numbers. So the way I brought, say, Samsung TV in, that's all signed into 8500 or above. 
Um, that's just the way I did it because I can't change spectrum from 6,000 and you'll see why I have it set the way it is once we go into the actual guide. With that all being said, that's all set up. So we could go ahead and jump over to my TV and take a closer look at how this works once it's all put together. Um, if everything goes right, you basically connect to it. And the worst thing you'll have to probably try to remember or find is the IP address for wherever your server is located. And again, you will need a Mac mini to make this happen. That's the only minus right now. I wish there was a PC way, but I'm not sure if you can maybe do it in a virtual environment or not and do a virtual Mac, P Mac you know, OS. But this is what I have was available, so should work good enough. Let's check it out. Alrighty then, now that we have the system all set up on the Mac server, we should be good to go now. So what we're going to do is basically go to the Play Store down here in the corner. And of course, you'll see I already have it there. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and search for the uh, Channels app. So we'll go ahead and hit that and just say, maybe, Channels. It worked. Voice commands never work for me for some reason. Okay, so there it is. It's, uh, it's there. Uh, you hit the button, you download it, good to go. When it's installed, you just open it. Now you will see two of them there. I just chose the first one that says DVR. The other one says it's for HD Home Run, but I think it's the same app overall, as far as I can tell. So it really doesn't matter, but I'd go with the DVR one because that's the one we're testing and using on this particular video. Uh, of course, I put in some of my other apps uh, since we set it up last time. I think I showed a quick shot at the end. The only minus is there is no way to turn this kind of thing off because there is an option to have more menus on the side or more categories, but I just use this one. This is all I need on my main screen. Pay attention, companies. This is all people need. We don't need a bunch of suggestions. We don't, be, we don't need to be told what to watch, when to watch it. It's... It's up to us, okay? I mean, some people may like that, but personally, I just can't stand it. So let's go ahead and check this out and stop gabbing. Okay, yeah, there's the guide. You saw it real quick in the beginning. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty much customized now the way I like it. Uh, you start off on the first batch, and I'm gonna kind of jump through using the page function, which you can do using if you have the channels up and down button on your remote. You can actually page through uh, was it six or seven of them at a time and it'll jump forward rather than going one by one now this guide is super quick I mean watch this thing scroll and it doesn't lose it at all you try to do that on a modern cable cable box you try to do that on a modern cable box <laughs> good luck uh, it's gonna freeze up it's probably gonna fall behind it may air out even on some of the TVs with the built-in tuner apps in them now, they, they have issues. But this seems solid. I hope they never change how responsive this is. And of course, once we get to the end of the, basically the antenna channels that I have, um, then we go into some pre-programmed YouTube channels that I put in there, one of them being my own. My 100 series are all my series I watch every now and then, like Northern Exposure or Dragnet or Columbo or MASH. Um, those are all in there. I can change those out with whatever I want. I choose just to have a few in there because I don't really want to tax the server any more than I need to because it is five or six years old, as I mentioned. Starting off in the thousands are some pre-programmed ones I put in um, using the M3U8 format. Um, it basically just made my own list. I wanted kind of news and weather together. So I kind of did that with the 1000s. Once you get into the 6000s, now this is all the pre-programmed stuff that, I, that we put in for the Sling and the Spectrum um, app. And of course, I'm using the Spectrum. I don't have Spectrum myself, but I do have a family member that has it. And I just, they set me up a sub login. I just use that login and these channels all just propagated in. I locked a few of them out because of this, that, and the other. And there's a few that don't work. I'm not sure what's going on there. It could just be something with geolocation or whatever, but 99, well, I'll say 95% of them work just fine. I have no issues with them. I mean, the occasional server blip or blip with my internet, um, with my router system, but 
Overall, I'd say it's a pretty solid system. Once we get into the 7000 series here, we'll start jumping by page again. Um, these are all channels that I programmed in for sports and just whatnot kind of channels. Just stuff I, it's from a different source. It just gives me a different Top Gear channel than what comes with, uh, that comes with say Pluto or the Samsung TV uh, apps. Now the Samsung and the Pluto, I combined into one, but mostly the Pluto stuff starts off around 8,000. From what I can see, most of the channels propagate in. Again, I lock out a lot of them that I'm never gonna watch. I don't personally watch reality shows, so a lot of those are not even in there. You may see a few of the game show type stuff like Survivor, but eh, I, I'm not gonna lock out. I mean, Pluto's got so many channels. The only problem with them is their ads seem to go on forever and they seem to play the same ads over and over and over again. And if I hear that BK commercial one more time, I might have to pull out a drill and do something to my head. No, I won't, but it's, it's just incredibly annoying commercial. Uh, the next set of them, the 8500s, of course, are all my Samsung TV and that pretty much finishes off the batch because I wanted my last, whoops, I jumped way too quick there. I wanted my last set of channels with the Samsung TV with all the music channels there. So if I want it to go to my music, I know it's right at the end of the list and that way it's easy to get to. Even if I am at the beginning, I can always use the page function and jump back. That being said, we also have another cool function. The only minus is to get to it, you have to go ahead and go over here and hit that and then change that to favorites, which I usually just leave it on my favorite channels. Like most of the channels I watch for sports and what have you, it's, it's all there. Um, when you do wanna watch something, you do wanna click on this area right there. You don't wanna click on this box because it's gonna pull up what's coming on later in the day, upcoming. I don't care for this function. I wish there was a way to shut it off, but as of right now with this version of the app, there's no way to shut it off. There's been a few complaints and this and that, but I just, I'd rather not have that at all. I mean, I don't need it. I'll probably never use it. So it's to me just useless. And I'd rather just go to the channel or at least ask me which I wanna do but it just makes it a little more confusing. But I'd say that is one of the minuses on this whole system that I found. There's a couple other weird nuances. Like I, I would like to be able to change the colors. I'm knowing the camera may come off as a bluish color, but it's actually in reality like a purple, purplish kind of tinge. And if you like purple, that's fine. I mean, it works for me and it's just preference. Recordings, uh, I've kind of showed that before. I just put a few movies in there just to record and test it out and just to see using different tiers, like the 6,000s and the 8,000s, and I've used some of my local channels, everything works fine. Library function, I'm still having some issues with this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I wish it would just offer movies or TV shows and go to it, but this is fine. It's no more confusing than Plex was, but once you get into your movies, then they're all there, you know, lined up. And this again is on the server already. I used to use Plex for this. I'm still having some issues with playback, but that's for another time and another place. Search function is self-explanatory. It searches for whatever program you're looking for. Um, the settings app uh, is basically just to manage your sources, manage recordings, alter settings. I did the global settings as you saw on the Mac server, so most of the settings are locked out. It's just gonna default to those on whatever TV I'm watching this on. The great part about this system, of course, is what I'll show at the end of the video, which makes it truly cool and truly special. And I hope this is a continued service and I would say it's definitely worth it for the $8 a month. But on that note, that'll do it for this IJDM. I hope you learned something new or found out something new and be like, oh cool, I wanna definitely check this out for myself. Highly recommend it. These people over at Get Channels, I mean, brilliant idea, well executed. I, I can't say I have any complaints, just a few things I would like to see an option for or be able to change. Other than that, great, great system they, they have here. Um, I, I can't say, I could, I could go on forever about it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you later. Don't leave, little bonus coverage for you. Of course, you can bring your Google TV stick with you on the go and it'll rec you say it's away and it logs into your account and you can log in. But the cool part is there's your guide and yeah, you can watch all your recorded stuff, you know, anything really. If you got a game that's going on that maybe you're in a different area and the game's not being aired on that network, 
Well, yeah, you could pull it right up on this as long as you have an internet connection. You're good to go. That'll do it for this one. We'll see you.